Rolex is the ultimate watch brand to ever exist, the brand that reigns supreme in the world of watchmaking. But underneath that shiny, successful image, there's something quite puzzling. For a brand whose products are designed to measure time, the irony is that getting one's hands on a Rolex often becomes an exhausting test of patience due to artificial scarcity. Similarly, the company's journey to its current position of dominance is shrouded in disturbing mystery and exclusivity. That journey of innovation and challenges began on the 22nd of March, 1881, when in a humble German village, a baby boy came into the world. His parents, sadly, never got the chance to see him grow up. Orphaned at a young age, he was far from ordinary. Even in those early years, a fascination was evident, not for toys or playthings, but for the intricate and delicate. There was a certain sparkle in his eyes, a twinkle that danced with the tick-tock of a clock's hands. But as the hands of fate would have it, no one around him knew that this boy's own hands one day would craft time itself. And when that boy was at the tender age of 19, he chose to be an apprentice at the renowned firm Kuno Corton. In there, he envisioned a world where artistry met advancement, where the tiny hands of watches didn't just mark seconds, but marked an era. This is the story of Hans Wilsdorf, a German orphan who, defying the constraints of his circumstances, rose from obscurity to shape the very essence of time. He didn't just create a brand, he birthed a legend, the legendary Rolex brand. Getting back to his early life, Hans Wilsdorf, born into the world with nothing but the promise of tomorrow, at the age of 12, Hans faced a heart-wrenching reality as he lost his parents. His uncles, stepping in as the heroes of our story, sold their prosperous family tool business, paving a golden path for Hans and his siblings to pursue the beacon of knowledge at premier boarding schools. It was there when Hans shone like a star mastering languages and mathematics with an ease that spoke of an extraordinary mind. But before the symphony of timepieces claimed his heart, there was the shimmering world of pearls. As an apprentice in a pearl export business, Hans embarked on a journey far and wide. Each port, each new horizon broadened his vision, polishing him much like an oyster refines a pearl. His wanderings led him to a Swiss watch company, Messrs. Kuno Corten. This was no mere shift. It was destiny's hand guiding him to his calling. In 1903, he moved to London. There, fate introduced him to Alfred Davis, an investor with a vision. This meeting of minds led to the inception of a company a seed that would soon grow into the towering tree of horological excellence we know as Rolex. Now, during that time, wristwatches were often dismissed as imprecise and unrefined. But Hans saw the diamond in the rough. His conviction that wristwatches could be both reliable guardians of time and elegant companions sparked a revolution. Also, Wilsdorf aimed to build a watch with unique design and time accuracy. To fulfill this dream, they got supplies from different vendors. For instance, they got the movements from a Swiss manufacturer, Hermann Egler, and encased them in British armor, and then sent those watches to jewelers, who engraved the initials W and D and were frequently stamped inside the case back. Years passed in this fashion until 1908, when, atop a horse-drawn omnibus in London, the name Rolex struck Hans like a lightning bolt. A whispered secret from an unseen muse, perhaps. The name echoed the rhythm of a watch's movement. And so it was. With the legendary name Rolex now resonating through the streets of London, the story takes us to Switzerland where the brand embarked on an extraordinary journey. That very year, 
1908, when the whisper of Rolex first echoed in Hans's ears, he planted the roots of his office in Switzerland. In the silent chambers of Mason Egler in Bienn, Switzerland, Rolex began to mold its legacy, crafting watches with a dedication to supreme accuracy. The year 1910 etched itself in the annals of horology as a Rolex wristwatch received the Swiss Certificate of Chronometric Precision, a monumental achievement and the first of many laurels for the company. But the success didn't stop there. In 1914, Rolex broke another barrier, securing the Class A Precision Certificate from England's Q Observatory. An honor once exclusive to marine chronometers now adorned the crest of Rolex. Yet the accolades couldn't quench Wilsdurf's thirst for perfection. He dreamed of a Rolex that could keep time flawlessly, no matter what challenges its wearer threw its way. And so the story continued under the name of Rolex Watch Company. Following the introduction of a gold and silver tax, Rolex took its leave from London in 1915 journeying first to Bien before finding its enduring home in Geneva. And by 1919, the brand registered under a new name, Montres Rolex SA. In the decade that followed, Wilsdorf and his team dedicated themselves to conquering a formidable foe, the elements of dust and water. This relentless pursuit of craftsmanship was to set the stage for a revolutionary invention in the annals of watchmaking. The relentless pursuit of perfection paid off in 1926, with the birth of a creation that would forever change the destiny of Rolex. The Oyster. Much like the shell of the marine creature it was named after, the Oyster case was an impenetrable fortress against dust and water, while still allowing the watch to be adjusted. The Oyster was a game-changer for Rolex, but its story holds a twist. The brainchild of this revolutionary design wasn't Rolex but two Swiss watchmakers, Paul Perigot and George Paré. Although designs that bore resemblance to the Oyster existed in the early 1920s, none matched the efficiency of Paré and Perigot's creation. Their design hinged on a screw-down stem and crown, a simple yet ingenious mechanism that sealed the case completely. Recognizing the groundbreaking potential of this invention, Wilsdorf acquired the patent and set the wheels of an enormous marketing campaign in motion. Named as the world's first waterproof watch, the Rolex Oyster created ripples worldwide when it embarked on a historic journey across the English Channel, safeguarded around the neck of the daring British swimmer Mercedes Gleitzen. The triumph echoed in the headlines for a whole month, with Rolex celebrating the achievement with a full-page advertisement on the front page of every issue of the Daily Mail. Also, the Rolex boutiques took the demonstration a step further, submerging models of the Oyster in aquariums showcased in their windows, living the filmmaker's mantra of show, don't tell. Thus, through ingenuity, drive, and brilliant marketing, the Oyster, this marvel of engineering, was brought to life, making a splash and forever imprinting the name of Rolex in the world of horology. The stage was set for Rolex's legendary journey, as it continued to break barriers and redefine standards, one tick at a time. And now with the Oyster, Rolex had carved its name in the annals of horology as an unmatched maestro. This creation kickstarted a legacy of relentless innovation that would shape the brand's story for more than 50 years. But for Hans Wilsdorf, the journey was far from over. Just five years after unveiling the Oyster, another of his dreams took shape in the form of a self-winding wristwatch, a masterpiece that would be known forever as the Oyster Perpetual. This groundbreaking technology which today forms the core of every automatic movement, was remarkably simple in its genius. A centrally mounted, free-spinning rotor, it was designed to harness the motion of the wearer's arm to wind the main spring. 
More than just another feather in Rolex's cap, the invention of the perpetual movement marked a crucial evolution in the art of watchmaking. Watches were no longer just ornate pieces of jewelry or miniaturized clockworks. They had become an integral part of the wearers, needing to keep pace with the rhythm of their owners' daily lives, withstanding every challenge thrown their way. As Rolex conquered the trials of precision, weatherproofing, and self-winding, the brand embarked on a new journey, pairing its innovation with the pulse of sports and adventure. As daring pilots etched their names in history, they did so with a Rolex on their wrists. Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Blacker, first to photograph Mount Everest from the air, praised his Rolex for withstanding such extremes. Similarly, during an epic 37,000-kilometer England-Australia flight, aviator Owen Cathcart-Jones commended his Rolex for its steadfast accuracy amidst climatic changes. On land, Rolex accompanied Sir Malcolm Campbell as he set a land speed record at the Bonneville Salt Flats, ticking away perfectly under extreme conditions. By World War II, RAF pilots were replacing their service watches with Rolex, a testament to the brand's trustworthiness. Moving forward, Rolex launched into a series of revolutionary releases over the next half century that shaped the landscape of luxury watches. Each creation was an instant classic, reflecting the firm's iconic status. Upon Hans Wilsdorf's passing in 1960, he bequeathed the entirety of Rolex to a charitable organization, the Hans Wilsdorf Foundation. The privately held company to this day supports children's charities worldwide a tribute to Wilsdorf's own beginnings as an orphan. The foundation also fuels innovative entrepreneurial ventures, reminiscent of Wilsdorf's spirit, who was a holder of over 700 patents. Today, Rolex SA, nestled in the heart of Switzerland, is the beacon of luxury watchmaking, crafting over 2,000 watches each day and raking in over $7 billion in annual revenue. Under the Rolex's umbrella, you'll find the prestigious Rolex and Tudor brands, their timepieces displayed in official stores worldwide. Rolex's marketing brilliance lies in its collaboration with celebrated personalities who don Rolex creations and endorse their charm. Since overtaking Timex in 2000, Rolex has dominated the watch industry's marketing scene. The Le Mans 24 Hours Auto Race has been timed by Rolex since 2001 solidifying Rolex's association with precision and endurance. Among the brand's long-term ambassadors are sports and cultural icons like Gary Player, Arnold Palmer, Roger Penske, Jean-Claude Killy, and Dame Kiri Tekanawa. Rolex's reach extends to equestrian sports too, with the Rolex International Jumping Riders Club Top 10 Final being one of the key events it sponsors. So, when you strap a Rolex onto your wrist, you're not just wearing a watch, you're embracing a legacy of innovation and philanthropy. Your achievement in owning a Rolex is a testament to your own accomplishments, reflecting the values of this remarkable company that crafted it. In essence, Rolex, the brainchild of a curious German orphan, has grown into an unstoppable force in the world of luxury timekeeping.